Welcome to I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom from Dollar Shave Club, where we explain something very complicated in mere minutes to occupy your brain while you shave. In this edition, we'll be discussing the biggest con jobs of all time, as explained by someone who sounds smart because he's British. It's pretty much a rule that any discussion of legendary cons has to include a mention of Charles Ponzi, the man who invented the Ponzi scheme. But why talk dull financial scams when there are much more entertaining con jobs out there? For example, Eduardo de Valfiano, the man who stole the Mona Lisa. Wait, that's not a con. That's just straight up theft. I call shenanigans on this podcast. Well, there's more to it than that. The Argentine con artist commissioned six perfect forgeries of the Mona Lisa, then lined up six separate buyers, each unaware of the other and each convinced that they were going to be sold the original painting. He then paid a former employee of the Louvre, an Italian thief named Vincenzo Perugia, to steal the real Mona Lisa for him. It was Perugia who eventually masterminded and carried out the theft on August 21st, 1911. How did he do it? Did he hang on a wire from the ceiling? Did he dodge laser tripwires? Did he fight the security team to the death? Are you prepared for the mind-blowing true story of how this simple museum worker stole the most famous painting in the whole world? Yes! He hid it under his coat and walked out the front door. Oh, come on! Sorry, real life generally isn't very sexy. Anyway, once the six prospective buyers saw the news that the painting had been stolen, they happily paid for their respective forgeries, believing they were the genuine article. Perugia was arrested two years later trying to sell the real one. That's pretty ridiculous, but what about that guy who tried to sell the Brooklyn Bridge? What was his deal? George C. Parker didn't just sell the Brooklyn Bridge. He sold it over and over again, twice a week for years, usually to unwitting tourists. And he didn't stop there. Parker also sold Madison Square Garden, the Statue of Liberty, and even the General Grant National Memorial by posing as Ulysses S. Grant's grandson. He was eventually imprisoned for the third time in 1928 and died behind bars. Has anyone else ever sold national landmarks they didn't own? They have. In 1925, Victor Lustig convinced a scrap metal dealer that the Eiffel Tower was shortly to be torn down and had him pay for the metal in advance. Which sounds ludicrous, but it's important to remember that the tower was never meant to be a permanent fixture. It was built as a temporary installation and was, for many years, wildly unpopular in Paris. As such, the scam wasn't completely implausible. But this wasn't even Lustig's finest hour. That came when he managed to con infamous gangster Al Capone out of $5,000. Around $70,000 in today's money. The scam was shockingly simple. He approached Capone and convinced him to give him $50,000 to invest. After which, he did... nothing. Wait, what? How did that work? Lustig simply put the money in a safe and left it untouched for two months, after which he returned it to Capone, apologetically telling him that the deal had fallen through, but that he had managed to recuperate Capone's investment. The gangster was so blown away by Lustig's supposed honesty that he gave him the five grand as a thank you there is a sucker born every minute tune in next time for more i learned a thing in the bathroom and in the meantime head to dollarshaveclub.com for more podcasts and a big old pile of grooming products